I can't believe how ridiculous today is. Like, you know what's really funny, boo? Hmm? So, did I t was I telling you that uh, I posted in that political astrology group or whatever, that, that thing I said, you shouldn't allow anybody who has a sanitary Uranus and a Pluto Scorpio to actually work with kids. Mm -hmm. Because that whole story about that lady uh, having a sex, an ongoing sex, not only an ongoing sexual relationship with a, an eighth grade student, a 13 year old, but then the parents consented and, and were happy that the kid got her his teacher pregnant. What? Yeah, and the, the footage was her walking in the court basically, you know, to stand trial for the bullshit she just did. And she's walking in there, like, all dolled up, and it's not even phasing her. It's like Casey Anthony status. Mm -hmm. When her going into court and saying, like, oh, I, I did something wrong? And I'm just like, yes, her whole demeanor and behavior of just, like, not even being able to process that she did something wrong. And the whole, yeah... People uh, all around, the parents, the kid, the teacher, all not having a sane, healthy response to this scenario. And when I posted that in the political astrology group or whatever, they said, they said, I think this is the kookiest fucking thing I've ever heard. And I'm like, what, that Uranus and Sagittarius in medical astrology equates to insanity? And they go, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. You're insinuating that an entire generation has mental problems? And I'm like, yes. Because all those people are the ages of the social justice warriors, the third wave feminists, the Antifa people, the ISIS extremists, Kim Jong Un, Casey Anthony, the teacher. I mean, yeah. And I even admitted that I'm nuts too, because I'm a part of that generation. But at least I'm like self contained and I don't like projectile vomit my fucking apeshit nut stuff to disrupt other people's lives. It, it, but. Yeah, I started posting, like, you know, references for Judith Hill's medical astrology book, where I got that from, and everything, and I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, I already knew I was crazy, I just didn't know what part of my chart I was crazy until I researched medical astrology a little bit more, but I'm just like, this whole group started going on about how, wow, you're, you are so stupid, and the, <laughs> the last comment was, you don't understand the Plutonian archetype or the Scorpio archetype at all. You need to stop perpetuating gloom and doom and stop acting like you know anything about Scorpio. I didn't even say anything besides Pluto Scorpio generation. And I'm pretty sure I, da I damn well know about it. Since I was fucking born in it. Besides the fact that, yeah, Scorpio is my key sign in my chart. I still don't understand. I don't know. We don't like being Plutonians, right, Boo? Well, I'm indifferent. I don't think it's cool. I don't think it's cool. I never liked Scorpios. I was in denial for, about it for a long time. And it fucking sucks. It comes with superpowers, so I'm okay with it. Well, I mean, it comes with superpowers, but sometimes I'd rather just be a dipshit, like, full-blown Libra or something sometimes. I don't know. No, because I would absolutely hate myself. I would be intolerable if it weren't for these influences, so... Yeah, well... It's, it will even like, you know, from a, an astro psychological or therapeutic perspective, being a Plutonian is nothing to be happy about. It's the epitome of their gloom and doom and trauma signatures, or abuse and power, or psychological things. Because Scorpio and Pluto is associated with psyche and psychological stuff. Yeah, I'm kind of okay with that. Like I said, it comes with superpowers, so I'm alright with it. What I'm saying is that. Like that one Ryan guy or whatever, that I can't remember anything else about him besides he's a whiny cancer that, yeah, um, that would always post like, you're not a Plutonian. I'm like, dude, do you think I, I like promote that I'm a Plutonian because I think it's cool? I, I figured it's a, it's like a, you know, a disclaimer thing saying, by the way, I'm probably going to be too intense for you or too gloom and doom and darky or something like that. What what other archetype would you attribute gloom and doom to if it wasn't Scorpio? Maybe Saturn. You know, Capricorn. Yeah. Any, or honestly, any anybody in the winter range there, because that's the essence of the season they're in. Right. But apparently, gloom and doom is not anything about Scorpio. No intensity. It's a Scorpio thing. But with that comes the uh, intensity of perception as well. Hence the gloom and doom thing. 
Right. Right. The whole darkness thing. But oh my god. So apparently that whole I don't know what niche of that political astrology group kind of people are. Um but they were completely um dumbfounded by the concept that there's astro psychology. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, dude. Okay. So like why the fuck are they here if they don't actually believe anything going on? I don't understand. Because they're just like like Peter Novak where he goes, There's gonna be some sort of false flag incident that'll happen sometime between this month to this month later or and this isn't me like, you know, bashing anybody I know, but like in that here comes the storm group. Yeah. One of them was saying, have you guys done the chart for the Super Bowl yet? And I'm just like I'm I'm well aware that you can pretty much make a chart for anything, but I'm just like And at least I'm glad that people are doing astrology you know, you know, reading it or interpreting it accurately to actually be accurate. But I'm just like Can anybody use astrology for something useful? Like, that's essentially what the fuck it was about. To keep track of the seasons, so there would know when death's coming. To keep track of plagues, and pandemics, and to know when, you know, to prepare for agriculture seasons. And specifically, it was to see, um, like, what best works for you nutritionally, especially back before there was modern medicine and stuff. Like, the entire purpose of astrology used to be completely for practical reasons and nobody uses it for practical reasons at all but anyway um i'm looking at the chart for right now because not only has there been really you know odd kind of uh, reoccurring fatality things apparently there was a train derailment in italy this morning it was right around the same time frame um like it, it was like 8 8 a.m or something over in italy when it happened and it derailed and sim it's uh, strikingly similar, I haven't looked, thoroughly looked into it too much, but it's strikingly similar to the derailment that happened in Seattle in December, so not even, it was barely over a month ago. Then my friend Fred said that there was actually another train accident that happened in Boston yesterday. And he posted the the, the news article about that, and I'm like, holy crap! So I, I remember when I was first take, gonna take the train, I was asking you and I was asking like Ross and Jackie, I said, are trains safe? Because I have this feeling that I should be scared. Usually they are, that's the thing. That's what that's what you all told me. And I'm like, really? And I'm like, are you sure? And there's like, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't you know, I'm like, it's not gonna like fall off the tracks and derail or anything. It's like, well no, and it's like and then I remember Ross saying, if anything, there's sometimes head on collisions or something like that when somebody doesn't pay attention. And it's like, but I doubt that's that the same as bus. Yeah, and I'm just like, wow. And I'm just, as soon as I said, are you sure? And remember, I got here because you bought my ticket. If I would have been on the next train ride a couple days later, I would have been on that train that derailed in fucking Montana, but it didn't actually cause any deaths or anything. I'm just like, holy crap. So within the last year duration, there's at least confirmed three derailments that have happened. And I'm just like, but specifically, it's alarming that so many of them have happened right away. Um, within this time frame, so it would have to be something that's a uh, one of the planets, you know, Jupiter and down. And I automatically assume Jupiter because symbolically that has to do with long distance travel. So interstates, foreign travel, or like the the actual railroad kind of, you know, streamlined things. That's the other thing when I saw some random German group that I'm a part of that's for the anti refugees posted freaking out about how there's an American Airlines plane on fire and I'm like what the hell and it's a live stream video and I'm like are you serious I click on that and it doesn't have any other details about it it's just showing the video and I'm like what the hell so then I put it in the Facebook thing it says that it happened in October then I google it and it says it happened in August and then I I uh, refined the google search and then it showed that one of them happened in August it was like flight 383 and then the one that happened in October was uh, 767, but the footage for both of those incidents were the same fucking footage. So I was like, what the hell's going on? I, I obviously already know that there's um, a huge, you know, um, a fantasy or fabrication of what's really going on. Everybody knows about that because even the idiots that still watch the news and believe it go, oh, oh fake news. But not the news I watch. I can tell what's real. Like, dude, 
they lie so much on the fucking news that it's a fucking joke. Like a, like a widespread, well-known joke about how there's fake news. But why do you guys even still watch it anymore? So I traced the back to the website. It looks like it's a WordPress blog to some asshole that like he was posting or streaming that live live stream of that you know actual plane on fire and people running and screaming or whatever. And they said they don't know how many how many fatalities there are yet. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, and I said, wait, why? And it, and and he specifically posted like the title of it was a. Uh, breaking news now happening and I'm just like dude and I looked at the rest of his uh, his list or his entries and a lot of them are just current events or news reports right and, and I was just like okay so this guy does this regularly I was like he has to fucking know because I googled I even put 2018 at the end of that and nothing came up it actually corrected me and said 2017 and I even went on Twitter and looked at the like American Airlines you know, page or whatever, there's nothing going on. And I'm just like, like, what the fuck? So I actually left a comment for that guy. And I said, you realize that you're actually being psychologically abusive, that you're fucking out of your mind and you're insane, and that this is actually traumatizing. What the fuck is wrong with you? Uh, except for my name is fuck you. Even though I left my email, but I mean, what is he going to do? He can, it's one of my emails that, like, I never check. <laughs> but uh, I was just like, wow, so... Obviously, there's physiological trauma signatures going on with all the um, malefic stuff. And, and to think, we don't even have a Mercury retrograde right now either. That's terrifying. Because um, that's usually notorious for when there's accidents and stuff like this. But uh, specifically, I was kind of thinking when I was looking at this. A trine. Is there still a trine? Yeah. So the trine between Jupiter and Neptune is supposed to be the... Um, the malefic signature associated with the uh, flu pandemic becoming more deadly or widespread or contaminating more people. So it's like a, a higher probability of there being massive amount of infected people and higher, you know, uh, fatalities kind of thing, fatality numbers. And obviously there's different manifestations for all those signatures. So since Jupiter can represent, you know, um, abundance exaggerated or, you know, widespread, uh, it can also represent, again, like travel and, you know, uh, foreign travel and stuff like that. And Neptune and Pisces is just like, yeah, not reality, not here, not reality. Or it's contagious, or, you know, it's the self-undoing, or the self-sabotage, or, yeah, the downward spiral sort of shit. And I'm just like, yes, well, yes. So, I speculate that all these train instances have been happening were either meticulously and intentionally staged to actually happen which is still something that we were wondering about with the Antifa people and or the people who are actually uh, you know conduct the conductors that are driving the actual transports could potentially be sick and and you know out of it and or they could be mentally sick mentally fucking nuts and since from now we're in Aquarius season it's trauma signature time and uh, I was looking at this. So the layout we actually have for this moment. Am I looking at the equal or placidius? Okay. Well, it actually doesn't matter. Cause it, okay. So the first thing that I look at is that we have we have quite a few T-squares. We actually have a grand cross. But the first T-square I see, because we have a trauma signature, we have the Sun in Aquarius, Venus in Aquarius, uh, Vulcan in Aquarius, South Node in Aquarius, Hygieia in Aquarius, and Juno in Aquarius. And yeah. It's also in opposition with Ceres in the North Node. So Ceres is supposed to be the way that you, you know, are kind to yourself, healing yourself, or, you know, basically trying to improve or better yourself in general. So when there's a, a huge stellum in opposition with Ceres and it being in Aquarius means it translates to a trauma signature. Yeah, no, not good. Um... Yeah, I mean, I'm always apprehensive about Aquarius season in general, but it, it gets it gets better. So there's a T-square right now. The moon is actually in Taurus, which is supposed to be exalted. But all that's going to translate to is that um, it's going to be very effective to uh, fuck with people's emotional states or whatever in general. Because it's in opposition with Jupiter and Scorpio. And although we're about to have Mars go into Sagittarius in about a day or so because it's at 29 degrees... It's still within nine degrees of uh, an orb with 
Jupiter, so that's still worthy of a conjunction. So we have malefic, gloom and doom, um, destructive, or you know, you know um, toxic kind of uh, actions or ideations being perpetuated to e get an emotional rise out of people. And it's in T-square with the Sun, Venus, Vulcan, and South Node in Hygieia. So Hygieia is supposed to be just your overall mental health and, and being, you know, uh, well-being in balance. And specifically does attribute a lot to people's physiological hygiene and health overall. Taking care of yourself, maintenance, Virgo kind of stuff. So that being a trauma signature means people aren't taking care of themselves. That it being in the 12th house could vicariously mean that it's because they don't realize that they have the flu, which is, you know, scenarios that are already going on. And or it's actually that they don't realize that they're being mind fucked. So I think this is actually a great opportunity since the political astrology group or whatever uh, was making it evident that they've never heard of astro psychology or the concept of that. And that they don't understand how mental illness or, yeah, personality conflicts and stuff like that and insanity or problems can attribute to astrology charts. <laughs> this is a perfect actual uh, season for this. So, besides that T-square, I actually have it written up here. So, there's the T-square, that's the Moon, Taurus, Jupiter, Scorpio, and then the Sun, Venus, and Vulcan. Or, hy sorry, uh, Hygieia. Then, fascinatingly enough, we have Pluto sextile to Chiron and Jupiter. So Pluto has to do with your psyche, and it being Capricorn has to do with the establishment, basically controlling or psychologically manipulating people. And it being sextile to Chiron, Chiron has to do with your Achilles heel, it being in Pisces, and specifically in this moment being in the 12th house, uh, it'll obviously change as the day goes on, but uh, means that it would have to do with your subconscious or your overall uh, psychological stability, mental stability. But because it's in Pisces as well, that vicariously does translate all over the board with that, that it's a mental um, instability issue. So something that is being perpetuated that's abusive by the narrative, the collective, the governments, the media, the powers that be, whatever, is actually traumatizing people. Um, Pluto is actually associated with railroads too and trains so um, and Saturn's associated with structure so the sextile to Chiron actually could be a weakness or faulty issues with the actual train things which that could be playing into that but I still think it's the Jupiter um, aspects as well that's actually attributing to that and obviously it's sextile to Jupiter too with that Pluto so that's just magnifying either the weakness, magnifying the mental uh, instabilities, and specifically because Neptune's involved in all this, um, magnifying the delusion. Yeah. And another interesting thing I noticed, so the Uranus Pluto square, most people have heard of it even if you don't know what the hell it is. It happened, it was a seven, seven different alignment duration that happened over the span of like 2000, then 2008 to 2015, but it's supposed to be over, although Uranus is a generational signature, and uh, it will take at least a decade or so for all the actual influences of that to completely manifest and play out. But the um, interesting thing that happens with, um, it's almost like when you're, if you're playing like a slot machine game or something like that, and you hit a bonus, and you get free rolls or whatever, every time you hit a bonus you get free rolls, if you were going to equate that into astrology, if there are certain planets that um, are not obviously Uranus or Pluto because there are huge generational gaps that take uh, you know uh, decades if not centuries to realign th this way, um, if there's anything that becomes with an orb of Uranus or, or Pluto and it actually uh, causes a, a, a major aspect pattern it's like re-triggering and giving you extra spins or extra influences more or less of the Uranus Pluto square and we actually have Eris at 22 degrees of Aries Uranus at 24 degrees and Pallas is at the first degree of Taurus but that's still within 10 degrees so that's actually uh, yeah a stellum right there of Pallas which is a chaotic troublemaker and it's also the daughter of, of Jupiter so magnifying exaggerating stuff and Uranus is a trauma signature yet again, and it being an area that has to do with the self or you know people's physical lives. 
or their vitality. And then Eris is uh, essentially the the worst deviant, uh, the the more concerning deviant sort of, you know, daughter of Pluto, more or less, a fusion of Pluto and Saturn. Um, so with those three things together, actually, that's a signature for like Antifa attacks and like ISIS terrorist plots and stuff like that. I've already um, correlated that with past uh, transit interpretations and you know dissecting events and stuff. So we have that. And it's actually trining to Mercury in Capricorn, which is at 20 degrees, and Pluto's in Capricorn at 19 degrees. So, funny enough, even though it's not obviously an exact square with Uranus to Pluto, that's still within orb range for this to, to be a, re, uh, a triggering or a reoccurring signature. So we actually are right now not only experiencing the trauma signature at the Stellum in Aquarius, um, the psychological mindfuckery that's going on, the over-exaggerated destruction and annihilation with, you know, Mars and, and Jupiter and Scorpio, but we actually are experiencing a realignment or a, uh, uh, yeah, a, a revamping or re-triggering of the, the Pluto-Uranus square. So, another thing too, Uranus is associated with abnormality, dysfunction. Pluto is associated with psych, psych, the psyche, psychology, or behavior in general, just psychology in general. So abnormal dysfunctional psyche. That spells out why everybody's been losing their damn mind. That and contributing Neptune and being in Pisces that happened in the end of 2011 went into 2012. That doesn't help. So people have been slowly losing their fucking minds. They're completely lost with reality. And because of some of these really, really um, abusive aspects with Pluto in particular, actually, um, I, I actually wouldn't be surprised if people start har having heart attacks, aneurysms, or if they legitimately actually just off themselves because they can't take the, you know, like how chaotic and shit everything is and whatever else anymore. I, just, I, I honestly, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, that's kind of a contributing factor to the opioid epidemic anyway, which is also a Jupiter and Scorpio thing, by the way. Uh, and uh, other things al along that too. I mean, because there are some people who have been coasting a drug habit since Neptune went to Pisces, because Neptune and Pisces is notorious for drug addictions. But the, and that's obviously been um, like five years, five or six years now. And then now everybody's starting to drop like flies right now. That would insinuate that whatever kind of uh, like actual chemical that they're using or you know abu uh, that they're abusing is being altered. Or that somebody's actually, you know, uh, it, yeah, maliciously uh, getting involved with something and, and actually causing them to kill themselves. And or they're intentionally overdosing because of the mental, uh, the mental chaos and people feeling unhinged and, uh, yeah, apocalyptic kind of things. Doesn't help that we have a grand trine too with Saturn, Black Moon, and Lilith. To that palace in Uranus, and then the Trans Pluto association. So Trans Pluto is supposed to be the the halfway point of transformation. So it would be like a, a half a, um, when the moon's half full to waxing. If we were going to try to you know correlate the symbology with Pluto, so this this actual grand trine is supposed to be the establishment manipulating its powers, information, or its authority that's specifically causing some sort of traumas on the self, collectively, to in, in specifically um, cause some sort of, um, to actually set the stage for some sort of phenomenon to happen in the future. I'm not entirely sure exactly what, wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, present, future, past, present, future, past, present, future, past. Well, okay, so the malefic Jupiter and, and Mars being in Scorpio in that house, that would be associated with deaths or destruction. You know, people just dying in general. Like, this kind of translates to me like population control thing, but that's, re that's really, like, really out there to actually sabotage trains for population control. But this actually could um, go back to just people being psychotic and losing their minds 
and either being the people that are actually in control of the transports or if it's somebody actually sabotaging the tracks because I have seen, you know, compilations or records, I, I looked it up after the whole derailment happened in Seattle a month ago, about how common, you know, train instances are, so I can look at different charts and compare them and see what the, the correlation is, and it, just like Boo said, it is, it is actually very infrequent or rare for derailments to happen, so I don't know for sure if the one in Boston yesterday was a derailment, but just there being derailments in general, and Antifa specifically, uh, posting something on some of their websites or whatever about putting cement on train tracks it could totally make sense that that might be a thing or like I said this is insinuating that there's some sort of intentional wrench being thrown into the works to cause some sort of event or you know escalating kind of themes for some sort of you know end goal sort of thing so but anyway, um, with this T-square with the moon, Jupiter, and the sun, that's personality conflict, by the way. Personality conflicts are associated with um, people being neurotic, um, psychotic, delusional, and yeah, um, cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is, is the key word with that. Um, also, Uranus having a square, not only to Pluto, but Mercury being conjunct with that as well. Mercury and Capricorn actually is associated with gloom and doom and Nostradamus kind of stuff-esque. In fact, Nostradamus' Mercury was in was in Capricorn as well. And, uh, yeah, so everybody's, uh, that's the one thing that pissed me off about that plane thing this morning, is that with the dynamic going on, it, and there being trauma on the self, specifically, and obviously the whole gloom and doom perpetuating thing, that person could be potentially just fucking mentally sick, ill, delusional, and saw, like, something of that, or wanted to, or thought back to when it happened, and just posted it, but it actually doesn't make sense why they would put that this is currently happening now and breaking, and then, in, and then trying to actually stream it on live on Facebook to make it seem as if it's happening now. The only people that actually believe it's happening now are people in Germany. <laughs> but, yeah. So that's a personality conflict, personality conflict, yeah. And technically an enabling or, you know, um, positive aspect would be sextile or trine. To cure on with Pluto would be another personality conflict. So, yeah, um, I guess that's just kind of the debrief on the astro psycho analytic developments of the transits going on right now and um when does mercury go retrograde please don't tell me it's doing soon goes retrograde in 56 days while it's in aries oh and the sun and Aries pisces in 23 days hmm Let's see. Oh yeah, that's right. We have the total the total lunar eclipse happening in five point eight days. Five twenty six AM Pacific Standard Time. Oh my god, dude. No, 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 no. Wow, no, no. I'm not even gonna go there. I was actually going to dissect that and go into that, but give it a data process or something like that. I'm not going to perpetuate the Capricorn Mercury gloom and doom thing and the quote unquote inappropriate or inaccurate Scorpio kind of attitude or perspective that I'm trying to fake that I have. I wish I could fake that. I wish I could fake that I don't have that. You, you know how awful it is to get the Nostradamus kind of things in your head or like even Boo will be like this he's like oh my god is this gonna be okay is this gonna be okay like he'll he'll worry himself like into a fit or I I literally will get sick about things because I'm like oh my god this is gonna happen this is gonna happen this is gonna happen this is gonna happen that's actually why I got pissed about that airline thing too because when I saw that happening I'm like what the fuck is happening and I had to chill the fuck out for a second I looked at this chart and I'm like chill the fuck out 
You already know it's Aquarius season, it's trauma signature, and that motherfucker. I want to start knocking schools together. I really do, because people aren't listening anymore, and people are just, regardless that they're maliciously doing it, because I've, I've seen people actually specifically perpetuate fucking lies, like a story, to defame or, you know, make somebody look bad, that has actually led to them uh, being targeted and attacked or of some kind. Like, it's actually to incite violence. They're just making up and fabricating a story about somebody who has nothing to do with them or whatever else to then incite violence against them for no reason. Like, that that's going on beyond the whole cognitive dissonance thing and people not being in tune with realities. I'm just like, dude. And this uh, lunar eclipse is coming up is actually going to be a super blood moon and it's um, going to be conjunct the nodes again which means that um, collectively uh, there's going to be uh, some trauma signatures and polarizing um, you know yeah it, it intensity going on so I think it's funny everybody thinks that you know the mutable years was really chaotic and crazy which it was because it was unpredictable but what's in what's terrifying now is that everything's going to be like happening in real life, physical life, mundane. And instead of it just being like, oh, something might happen today or nothing will ha probably happen today or this crazy thing happens today, there will be crazy fucked up things happening on a regular basis, constantly. Yeah. The Uranus Pluto Square re-triggering aspect will make sure of that as well too. Have fun with that. And I feel actually sorry the most for those people in that political astrology group because if they don't even have any kind of clue about kind of what I was rambling about on about, they are really mentally fucked. And good luck with that one. Good luck with that one.